Cybersecurity is not just for big businesses anymore. In 2025 and beyond, every individual, small business, and family needs to start taking their cybersecurity seriously. Would you know what to do if your child's identity was stolen or one of your smart devices was hacked? Technology is everywhere. It's all around us. It's in our phones, it's in our TVs, it's in our thermostats, it's in our crockpots. Every single one of these devices is adding some degree of risk into our lives. Most families don't even realize it and they're definitely not doing anything to manage that risk to an effective level. Those risks are not going to decrease on their own. In fact, they're only going to continue growing into the future. A lot of people nowadays have smart locks on their doors. They're very convenient. You can access them from your phone, from anywhere. However, what if that got compromised and you noticed that someone had accessed that and it wasn't you? Or what if your child goes to apply for college trying to get loans and you find out that their identity had been stolen for years and somebody had been racking up a bunch of debt in their name? Or that you clicked on a link, seemed like it came from your bank, and found out that your accounts had been drained, but you didn't realize that until you were checking out at your grocery store or trying to put gas in your car to make it through the week. You're not powerless. There's all sorts of things that you can do to secure your account. A lot of them you've probably heard before, like making sure that you have strong passwords that are unique. A good rule of thumb there is that if you can remember it, it's probably a bad password. Password managers are very accessible. Nowadays, you can go to your app store for your phone. You can get one on your computer. A lot of times, if you pay a little bit of a fee, it will sync between your computer and your phone. You remember one long passphrase, not a word, several words strung together that you can remember that is still hard for a hacker to guess. And then from there, you let it generate all sorts of unique and complex passwords you never have to remember ever again. Copy it, paste it out of there, you're good to go. Although you want to try to secure that with a secondary, what we call a multi-factor, second factor, so like an authenticator on your phone or a hard key token, something like that. We'll get into that at a uh, later date. Oh, does take too much time. Yes, they take a lot of time, and that's why you want to use one is because hackers are uh, low effort. If they can't get into your stuff because it's going to take them a little while, then they're going to go try to hack somebody else instead of break into your thing. So. Oh, and you definitely don't want to be using what we call SMS, your text messaging. Don't get a code sent to your phone. That's not a very good way to do it. People can intercept those text messages or uh, it's what we call SIM swapping. Switch to a copy of your phone and have all that access. It's a very bad way to do it. Don't, don't use that. As far as your kids, your children go, make sure they know that you shouldn't be sharing passwords with anybody. What about grandma? Definitely not grandma. She does some shady shit. <laughs> <laughs> And not even your friends. Actually, if you do share a password, it's a really good idea to change it afterwards. If for some reason you absolutely have to give it out, just make sure that you go to your password manager, generate a new password, get that thing changed, and roll on. But for the kids, have them not think of a password as just a, a password. That's a key to one of those accounts. In a lot of cases, that's like a digital diary or a digital room. How many keys do you want people to have to your physical diary or your physical room? Do you just want your friends to be able to come and go and take a look at stuff and potentially use that against you? And even if they don't use it against you, do you trust them to safeguard that the same way that you would? They might accidentally let some stuff slip that they shouldn't have just because you gave them access to it. And if you give them a password to one account, there's a very good chance that you're reusing that somewhere else so they may get access to things you didn't even intend to give them. So to recap, don't share your passwords. If you accidentally share a password, change that sucker. As far as your home Wi-Fi goes, you need to change that default password. That's the one that's usually stuck to the side of it. It's usually something like brightfish913. Make sure that you change that thing. If you have to write it down, try to put it in an actual safe or better yet, put it in that password manager we already spoke about. It's a very good idea to set up what they call a guest network instead of letting anybody that comes to your house just hop on your Wi-Fi and potentially have access to your devices or more likely somebody who already has access to their device that they didn't know about now has access to potentially all of yours as they stay in range of your devices and have a chance to try to what we call pivot onto them in your network. Really good idea to keep all that stuff quarantined in its own, set up a guest network you will be glad you did. Bonus points if you only turn on that guest network when you have actual guests and don't just leave it on all the time. It's also a really good idea while we're talking about setting up other networks to set up what we would call like a smart device network, not your main network for uh, devices that are needing to be treated a little bit more securely. For instance, things that you access your main accounts on, your banking accounts, things like that. You want to have them on a different network than say your refrigerator or your ring doorbell, whatever you've got there that's going to be a much more low security device. you think that a ring doorbell would be high security, it's a tiny little computer that doesn't have a lot of security. So you kind of want to put those things on their own network. 
It's a lot more user friendly now for a lot of your wireless routers to be able to set those up. So if you have the option, I would definitely recommend doing that. As far as scammers and things go, social media, other things, the best thing you can do is when you see one of those, especially if you think it's like laughably terrible, or if it was really good and you thought, oh man, I almost clicked on that, share it with people. Make sure that your friend group, your family, your kids, your coworkers all know about that particular phishing attack is what we would call it, that scam attempt, so that they can protect themselves from it as well. They might have fallen for one and not realized it and need to be doing some sort of like emergency triage in their lives. It also helps your kids to stay aware of that, stay suspicious, it's a very good thing to do and keep their eyes open for things like that in their own lives. So how does Secure Play fit into all this? Well, we're going to help give you some like ongoing guidance. We're gonna help try to take that really big, crazy, complicated stuff and simplify it, make it something that you can actually act on in your own lives. We're gonna try to do that with like minimal tech talk and jargon, uh, acronyms, things like that. We're just trying to talk to you like real people. We also try to provide like practical tips, actionable steps, things like that, that you can not only put into place in your own life, but that you feel confident enough in helping your friends, coworkers, loved ones be able to implement in their own lives as well, that you will be able to be something of a leader in that space in your own group as well. On top of that, where your cybersecurity or hacker friends, you can Ask any questions that you have about things that are going on out there, drop that in the comments. We will check those out and we will either just respond to that comment or it could potentially be the next video that we do be on a topic that you recommend to us. Small steps that you take today can protect your family tomorrow. You don't have to have airtight cybersecurity. You just have to not be worth the time and effort it would take to hack you and that's not really that difficult to do. To that end, leave us a comment about something you'd like us to cover in the future. We're still kind of getting our footing here, so whatever you've got for us, we'd be more than happy to help you with. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, which we're not at yet, but you probably will if you made it this far, then leave us a like. Subscribe for more tips and expert insights. Share this video with somebody that you care about and start making those small but meaningful cybersecurity changes together. We'll see you soon in the next video where we'll dive deeper into child identity theft, what it is, how to mitigate that, which means to like reduce the risk of it. I'm Jay, this is Secure Play. Have a blessed day. We'll see you in the next one.